Evaluation of the Trauma Patient ATLS Protocol The Advanced Trauma Life Support ATLS It is the ABC The Airway with C-Spine Control it is the Breathing and Ventilation The Circulation and Hemorrhage Control It is the Disability Evaluation and checking the neurological status and exposure and environmental control. Adherence to the ATLS protocol during evaluation of the injured patient in the emergency room improves the patient outcome and decreases the initial management errors. Evaluation of the multiple trauma patient is very important and you start with the airway always the airway. The first priority is airway control, usually with intubation if needed. Following intubation, the management should consist of ventilation and placement of chest tube if needed, then vascular access, circulatory stabilization, then you get the x-rays. And when you do airway control, you need to have C-spine control. Nasotracheal intubation has the advantage in patients with suspected C-spine trauma because it does not require hyperextension of the neck. You're going to evaluate the airway for obstruction. If you have a facial trauma and the swelling in the area of the airway, you probably have to do cricothyroidotomy. It's an emergency procedure used when routine methods of intubation are not effective or contraindicated. This is a favorite test question. The second thing is breathing and ventilation. This is usually evaluated clinically, but you can see the problem in the chest x-ray or arterial blood gases. This is some of the scenarios. A scapular body fracture and some rib fractures and x-ray shows lung consolidation. The patient is tachypneic or a patient was in a car accident and is in respiratory distress and after emergency intubation, the arterial black gases shows that oxygenation is poor with absence of breath sounds on one side and you have resonance on percussion on the same side and maybe tracheal deviation to the other side. There's a tension pneumothorax and you will put a large needle in the second intercostal space midclavicular line. The air is trapped in the pleural space between the lung and the chest wall and it is compressing the lung and shifting the mediastinum. So you need to decompress the pleural space urgently, whatever by a needle or you can put a chest tube. Watch out for a patient with a scapular fracture because that can injure the lung also. So if you have a patient that's hypoxic and is not getting better with intubation and you have decreased breath sounds on one side, you're going to put a chest tube because the patient has pneumothorax. And these are two examples of tension pneumothorax and flail chest. Then circulation. Circulation problem, you will see it clinically or radiologically, like in a chest x-ray or pelvic x-rays or CT scans. Circulation hemorrhage control means initiation of resuscitation. A direct pressure on the bleeding site or a pelvic binder. Then disability and neurological exam to see if the patient has neurological deficit. The exposure and the environmental control will be clinical evaluation to identify occult injuries and look for open fractures 
and reworm the patient. What causes the patient death? It's usually diagnosis score plus the age of the patient that is used to predict mortality in a patient with blunt trauma and multiple injuries. So in the first few minutes, patients die from massive blood loss or from head injury. In the first few days from the injury, the patient dies from head injury. If the patient survived the first week of injury, they die later on from sepsis and multiple organ failure. And the question always comes, life or limb? Obviously, life is more important than limbs. And we physicians should strive to preserve the life and the limbs. And adherence to the ATLS protocol will probably help that. So let's take the secondary survey, which you do at 12 to 24 hours after the injury, will be complete exam and updates. The whole idea is when you do that secondary survey, it decreases the missed injuries by more than a third. We all know that about 10 to 12 percent of injuries are missed in the first 24 hours in patients with multiple trauma. So secondary survey is a good thing.